All right, here we go, guys, and we're here in Fort Pierce, Florida. You see a line of catamarans. We're at the Eastward Factory. That's actually my boat right there next to my uh, pickup car. Uh, it's a Honda, remember? Uh, I'm here with Rip Pratt, whose family bought out Dave. They were half owners with Dave East, who founded Eastward with uh, Rip's dad. Rip and his family are now the sole owners of Eastward. And again, we're here in Fort Pierce, Florida. Rip and I were just talking. Rip, this is like one of the big boat building manufacturing parts of the U.S. And maybe we'll get out of the wind a little because, of sure. course, I forgot to bring my mics with me. Um, give us a little history about this area. Sure. Well, you know, it's always been boating oriented. We're right here on the Atlantic. We're 60 miles from the Bahamas. We're up and down the Treasure Coast. In this immediate area, within probably a half a mile of where I stand, you have Pursuit, you have Cobia, you have Maverick, you have Blue Water, you have Twin V, you have Pathfinder, you have Hughes. So we have a really tight little community, community of manufacturers right here in Fort Pierce. The airport's right next door. We're a mile and a half from the inlet, and it's just a great source. And we all benefit from the ben we all benefit from being you know here with each other. So uh, that's been a great thing. As you mentioned, my father started the company with Dave East seven years ago. He's been half owner with Dave. Uh, they've had a great run. They've built a great company. Dave has had some. Has it was time for him to focus on what was important, which was his wife and his wife's health. And so we agreed to buy the balance of the company out. My wife has come in and taken over the operations side. My father has been uh, active as well, um, a long history, a successful businessman. And then I've gotten involved really focusing on the quality control and the operational logistics and as well the sales. Really what we're looking to do is to build on the shoulders of what was done before us and continue this great company going forward. And you impressed me when we first spoke on the phone and then mm -hmm. right when we met you mentioned you really want to get that QC to a world-class level. It has to be. I mean, what, what's the point of having such an amazing product if it doesn't go out in its highest and best form and there's not great follow-up in the event something happens while it's out in the field with its owners? So I've been active on the phone with the, with the open warranties, building the relationships with the folks that are in line to build, and then also focusing, we're in our new plant right now, so uh, you'll see it is a weekend, so we're not operational today. But this is our rigging department. We have two boats in rigging. And if you've seen your, when you made your last video, you'll probably, those that have gone back and seen it, by the way, we've gotten a ton of great feedback. So thank you for doing that. It's been a, a great resource for us. But if you go back and look at that video, you'll see the improvements that we have here, which give us the ability to put out the boats uh, at, a, at a greater pace without compromising quality or um, any of the elements that might slow down the process. So those that are in the line are gonna see that boats are gonna go out faster, but they're also gonna come out with a higher uh, quality control, attention to quality control going down the road. Right, and we mentioned, we're gonna jump right here. Yeah. That's the those, are your those are my <laughs> engines, those the 225 V6 Mercury's uh, naturally aspirated. Yep. And maybe we'll walk over to the boat that, sure. w the boat ahead of mine, the 24 ahead of mine that, uh, is that a Whisper Gray? Is that the That color? is, yep. That's exactly what that is. It was the first boat rigged with the 225s, and you started to tell me the performance, and I kind of kept my mouth shut, and I said, wait, Rip, let's wait for the video. Sure. Um, let, let us know about that. Well, it's the first 24 we conventionally have rigged the boat with the 150s. And this is the first 24 that we've delivered with the, with the 225s. We're actually going to run the performance data so that we can post it online. But I can just tell you from our first time in the water, the first three times that we've had the boat launched, the, the additional um, power control efficiencies are remarkable. The 150s still work great. But it's amazing what those 225s do on this boat. I mean, it's really it's really impressive. Yeah, I mean, maybe just a sneak peek, because Dave did send me the numbers, and it, it was pretty linear. And I, of course, presuming light on fuel, there's no T-top yet. Right. But it was almost the RPMs and the, and the miles per hour were matching. So 2,500, Dave yep. said, equaled 25 miles an hour. Obviously, that's going to go down. Mine is going to be bottom painted, too. Yep. So I'm not expecting that linear performance, but still... The, the fact that you could probably, if you want to cruise at 30, slow speed, you know, I was trying to do the math in my head. I don't think it's unreasonable that you might touch three miles per gallon um, if you go really slow. We'll know shortly. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. More uh, to come on that. I, there's, 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 we haven't seen anything in the market that's performing as our boats are conventionally rigged. And now with the addition of this engine, we're pretty confident it's going to be 
going to be pretty exciting, but we want to get that data before we put it out. Yep, yep. And I've been on the water my whole life, and as much as my father's been a part of this boat company since its inception, um, I'm still learning all the benefits. What I do know is you get out on the water, you have more beam, it's drier and it goes faster, it's out of the hole and you have better efficiencies. You have better fuel and economy. And there's very little bow rise. Yeah, it's it, it's up. You, you're up and you're up and running yeah. before you know it. I mean, that's I we own my my wife and I built one of the original Eastward. Uh, it was a Coastal 2200, which was not unlike a Pathfinder mid right, gunnels. Right, I remember monohull. Dave had that. Uh, the the brand was building. Yeah, like Pathfinders. Yeah, it was. It's a similar, and that's popular in this area. So we had one of those, and we have a lot of friends in the area who have Pathfinders, and the the difference. And they're great boats. They built a great name. They carry their value. We found from a performance standpoint the benefit of of the efficiencies again that Dave found and turned into a great boat for the for the market. Same type of situation here. They take a hull that has 50 years of of on the water uh, experience and one of the worst seas on the planet, which is down in the Australia, New Zealand waters. You'll find that the bulk of the air sea rescue folks use the basis of this particular right. hull, and that's the Kevlar the Kevlar cat. So, you know, why reinvent the wheel? Sure. <laughs> you know, so sure. when you can see how along, deep this tunnel is. I yeah. mean, I, I don't know how it's going to show up on with the GoPro, but uh, yeah, it, the, the tunnel is massive. It's it's really deep and that uh, helps with sneezing. Exactly. And, um, yeah. All right. Maybe we'll jump into the factory. Sure. Absolutely. All right. We're back. Rip, uh, we were just talking about uh, the new setup here. Why don't uh, you walk us through it? You know, in the, the, the Dave, Dave and his team did a great job early on getting a lot out of a, of a small space. But the reality is you spend a lot of time moving things around to be able to create the space to work on the boat, which is time taken away from building the boat, which is what we're here to do. In our new space, if our company is broken, the fabrication is broken into three segments. One is fiberglass in and out of the mold. And then, these are the two molds yeah. here. So you'll see we have the 24 here and you can even see our process right now feel free to step up there so this is a 24 that's in the mold that's being fabricated as we speak yep. you can see the kusa board yeah you can see the layup um, the gas tanks go in those two larger sections as we were discussing earlier our, our 24 comes with the same capacity as the 30 which is 100 is 300 gallons which is significant for this this size yeah, boat 300 in the gallons in a 24 is uh, yeah. ridiculous and it's center so I I presume that actually helps the balance of the boat yep. and it, its sea keeping ability too, where even on my CV, the tanks were further aft and with big heavy engines, it had a tendency to ride bow high and you you know, you had to play with the trim and the and the tabs to to optimize the ride. That'll that'll be less of an issue with this boat. Exactly. And that's that's the great uh, elements of the balance of our boat. It's the history of the hull combined with how we've gone about fabricating the interior layup. Uh, so that's our 30 over there. Yep. And then this is the cap for yep. the 30, which we can modify into the 24 as well by just taking out the middle six feet and bringing the two closer together. Right. And I believe my boat's getting that cap. It, ha yeah, it has that cap. It on has it, it on already. already yeah, on. I haven't. Yeah. I, we've not stepped onto my boat yet. Well, <laughs> maybe we'll end the video with a quick uh, Absolutely. progress update of my hull. We originally, when the company was originally formed, we used Armstrong brackets. We believed in the benefits of, of the performance of the boat, and they're a great company. The issue was they couldn't produce as quickly as we needed them. So we build almost as, as many things as that we can, as many parts that we can fabricate ourselves, we do. So we engineered, this is our stern bracket. We laid it out, designed it, then we sent it to our glass company. They did the engineering and said we're about three to four times over-engineered in terms of structural capacity. And they, we just said, that's great, we're happy with it, better more than less. So this is the layup for our stern bracket. We have our, one of our tops over there. We make almost the entire boat except, except for the welding and the gas tanks are, are, all, fab, are all made here. And that's that's something we're, is really important to us from a quality control standpoint. We know we know what we're sending out over the rail, which is really important. Behind you, this is then the assembly section. So the boats will go in and out of the mold, and all the parts are made behind you where we were, and then they will come in. They'll be staged into this section where then they are assembled, and the assembly takes place where we bring in the cap. And if you well, let's go over here to this stand right here. Yeah. And you'll see, go ahead and feel free to hop right up there. So this boat is then where we put in the gas tanks, which have been installed. Yep. And the, you know, the sole of the boat, if you will. 
and whatever the, the customer's layout happens to be, this is where it gets assembled. The, um, the console goes in here, and then once it's finished in assembly, then it'll go out and ultimately be prepared for rigging. Right, and you know, Dave and I talked about this. This looks like a three-piece hull, and you know, Dave explained, you know, technically, because everything is bonded together, it's, uh, he referred to it as a one-piece hull that, that has all the attributes of a three-piece hull, but because technically a, a one-piece hull, it's solid. Right. Right, so that's one of the things that makes us different is we do not use a liner. And the benefit from our perspective is increased performance. It's lower weight, increased performance. And we feel we're confident and the market has supported that we're delivering a boat with the fit and finish, uh, the fit and finish that the customer wants, but without the extra weight and therefore reduced performance. It also gives us the ability to craft solutions specific to the, Boy, it's um, windy today. <laughs> I know. Well, we have a storm coming in, so I was yeah. glad to get together with you to, earlier than later, for sure. There's a front moving through. It just allows us to get exactly what the customer wants at the highest quality. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we talked about this in the last video. And, again, the GoPro never does it justice. But this is a dance floor. Now, look, there's no – the the console isn't in. Uh, it, the boat is not finished, obviously. But you can just see how much square footage – there is, and this is the 30, obviously. Mine is yep. not gonna have this much, but still very impressive. You'll have the same beam. Right, You Nine, just three. have six less feet. Yep. That's it. Yep. Awesome. Boop, boop, boop. Then, I'm up here. Then we can go out here and I'll show you kind of our staging section. So the boats will, the boats will come out of the mold and they'll, this boat came out of the mold last week. So they'll come out of the mold and this is where they'll remain until they're ready to go into assembly. Right. Once they come out of assembly, they'll start lining up here, which then leads us into rigging, which is our third department. So as we pointed out, and we'll finish with your boat, when we get to that point, this is your boat, which is now officially in rigging. We'll take it on Monday to get the tower put on. We'll start putting on the rub rails. Uh, it has the engines, which we pointed out here. Right. Now it's a little crowded in here because our forklift is in place and the guys aren't here to work, but let's take you around to our rigging section. Normally this is not filled like this, but we're gonna go up here. Now, this is where, for instance, this boat, you can see the console's been installed. There's a coffin box. Now we're doing all the electronics. Now we're putting in all the elements that finish out the boat. It's obviously come back from welding. This is our top, which we fabricate here. The console here, the leaner, all of this is made here. Right. The coffin box, everything is made on site. So is this the same uh, rear facing cooler seat I'm getting? I don't think you have that height. Okay. I think yeah, yours I... is a little lower and it's yeah. not as deep. They went with a kind of the next size up, if you will. Okay, okay. And then they also will have a tackle center on the side and then access on the other side. Um, bait wells in, right. the, in the transom. The space under the bait wells is where the freshwater bladder lives. Two fish boxes, access to the uh, down into the transom. Yeah, beautiful. Nice roomy console. We get a, a ton of compliments on our console layout and its effectiveness. And you can see, so this is and a that coffin boat. box is yeah. huge too. It is, and you don't put the coffin box on the twenty four, right? You'd no. have to reconfigure yeah, where the yeah. console goes. It takes up a you know it takes up a fair amount of space, for sure. It, it does, it does. And th this one was interesting too because again, a ton of fishing room. Oh, that that might this be this is I'm, you. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I'm getting. Yep. Um, and I like this too, a little step up for seeing over. Yes. But this one obviously will have a cabin in the front. Um, and, I, and I know my friend John Sweeney is looking for something like this, uh, a catamaran fishing boat that has the ability for his grandkids to get out of the, out of the elements, take a nap, that something like this would fit the bill with him. Beautiful. Again, the, the hard top made in house yep. and just a lot of, of dance space. And how long do the boats typically stay in here? I guess it depends on how much stuff they want what we quote is a month in and out of the mold a month in and out of assembly 
and then four months for rigging. Now, it doesn't mean they're in rigging for four months. It means that that's them being staged and waiting their turn to come into rigging. Right. But some of the things that we're focused on going forward is there are, there are let's say, lighter duty riggings like your boat. Right. It's engines in the top, no electronics. We can get that boat in and out of here pretty quickly. So that's why we're expecting your boats effectively just coming into rigging. And I'd say no later than mid-February, we're going to be calling you and saying, come on down and pick up your new, your new vessel, which would be great. In contrast to that, this boat and both of these two boats have a significant rigging package, and they're going to be a solid two months, maybe even two and a half months to get through rigging. So we're taking on more riggers. That's, I think that's a great, a great example of what we're doing is we're hiring people when other boat companies are laying people off. We're taking them on. We have right. a backlog of almost two years of buyers, but we know we can... We can we can condense that process, and, and that's we were, what we're focused on. And we were talking about that, the fact yeah. that Fort Pierce does have these other companies, and I think we specifically talked about maybe Malibu with Pursuit, and now uh, Cobia. Those are higher end boats. They had a they were selling like hotcakes. Now with the interest rates up, you know that market slowed down. I mentioned that my local dealer in Eastern Long Island had no boats on his lot, uh, Cobia and uh, Pursuit, and now there's a ton of them. So you're able to maybe get some of that workforce that perhaps doesn't have the work anymore with those bigger companies and you can bring them on here and they're experienced and they've been doing this probably forever. Some of the, it's one of, exactly to that point. The benefit of being where we are is there will be times when other companies just don't need the workforce that they have. They might be making adjustment, downsizing, economy, whatever it happens to be. We're growing and building more boats, so we're hiring. So we have guys showing up on our door almost every day, which is a great luxury for us to find guys that were at one of the other companies for seven, eight, or 10 years. So we hired, we hired a guy just the other day who was a lead at one of the local companies set there for seven years, but they just were downsizing a bit because the market isn't absorbing as many of their boats, unlike in the COVID times. He was a great find for us. He's a wonderful guy. He's going to be a lead for us. He's going to, we're going to build a rigging team right under him. So we're really, awesome. it's a great benefit to us. It wouldn't be happening if we didn't have boats to build and sell, which, right. is, which is the good news. Right. Our, our greatest, we don't spend, we obviously don't spend any money on marketing and advertising. All of our sales come from our existing customers. Yeah, and customers. you don't even go to boat shows. I know one of the big questions like on the Facebook forum yeah. is, will Eastbrook be at a boat show? Will he? And you don't really need to be because... Yeah, they, they sell themselves, really. And this goes back to why the focus on quality control is so important, because our greatest sales force are our customers. So if we don't sell, if we don't put a boat out on the water that we can be proud of, that they're happy with, then they're not going to be out telling their friends, hey, you should have, you should be a part of the Eastwood family. So that's why we're really putting a lot of energy on to that communication, in, in communication with the customers, making sure we get everything exactly as they want it. That's our focus going forward to build on what's been done before us. Awesome, so next, my boat or? Sure, okay. yeah, absolutely. And we'll end the video with that. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. All right, we're about to step on my boat for the first time. You'll see this Magic Tilt trailer uh, has a ladder in the front, which I'm kind of clumsy, but lets you get up here. And yeah, first time seeing my boat. Remember it's sitting outside, so there are some leaves, but wow. Here we are, big hatch here. Uh, we're gonna have a trolling motor on this, so we're not gonna need a, a lot of anchor space. Um, yeah, look at this. A lot of room. Here's the console. A lot of room in here too. Presuming we'll put the batteries in there for the trolling motor. No head on this boat. Um, look how high this back is. The gunnels are really high. I mean, they're above my thigh. And this will be the twin live wells here. Access to the bilge, the bracket will go back here. A lot of fishing room for a 24. Yeah, you could put four guys on each side, no problem. Um, wow. Awesome. Well, Rip, I can't thank you enough for taking time out of your Saturday. This was wonderful. Great to see the new factory. Great to see my boat for the first time. And yeah, look forward to picking it up in, uh, in a month and a half or so. And I'll include uh, contact details for how to reach Eastward if yep. people are interested. But uh, anything you want to say? 
I'm just thrilled that you came by and we really welcome the opportunity to share what we're doing here with you and your viewers. We're excited about where, where we've been, but we're really excited about where we're going. We have a great plan going forward and we think and we're getting the, the response at the end of the day comes from the market and we've got people lining up to buy the boats. So all's good in the world and we'd love to have anybody come by anytime, see the factory and get out on the water with us. Awesome. Thank you again, Rip. Thank you. Guys, uh, as always, if you like these videos, hit that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber and you like content like this, please consider subscribing.